also want to think about the growth company. We could have explored that more tonight. We've had many articles in various wraparounds in the newspapers and coverage in the world view. But there will be, over time, new members joining this council, perhaps in eight or nine weeks' time, who want to know the history of this and want to know what the safeguards are for it. And perhaps the company will be up and running by the autumn, and perhaps we should have an opportunity as councillors, apart from the one session that was held where members came at short notice and had about three quarters an hour to ask a few pointy questions about it, there are developments in the borough that might take place that will require more consideration by the council. And if the council is the final body with the veto, or the arbiter, or perhaps unease develops about the way the growth company works, we need more time for council meetings to pursue these issues. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Okay, so now opening this to debate. Any members want to come in, speak to this motion? Okay, well, I'm going to move to seconders then. Councillor Mitchell, you've now got, as a seconder of the amendment, you have three minutes to speak to the amendment. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think my colleague quite succinctly put the case forward that we want. Uh, the recent argument behind that was, again, we can only ask good questions of the reports that are written by the Cabinet members, and most of them are copies of the press releases that we put up before. And it's trying to find a way to actually dig into and delve in and get the real answer questions answered properly instead of what was like when I got earlier on in relation to the problems with the bridge. We, we, we looked last year at the amount of extraordinary council meetings that were called um, in that view. We thought an extra one in the calendar would be able to survive and uh, suffice the people to uh, the members to make sure that they get the, best, the right answers uh, to the questions that we required. So I, I second the motion. Thanks for that. Thank you, Councillor Mitchell. Councillor George Davis, the second of the recommendation. We've now got up to three minutes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I think the, where Phil made the point about um, the growth company, and um, there's been up to now uh, one public meeting which has taken place, I know, in the uh, town hall, not a lot yet, mm -hmm. and, and in, in all the constituencies. But um, I, I would say, Phil, to you, uh, and to Dave in particular, who's well known in terms of the scrutiny committees, you've got an ideal opportunity. If you want to scrutinise the growth company, that's the place to do it, yeah. Just do it in the scrutiny, in the scrutiny committee. You haven't got a ring here. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. Right, Councillor Phil Davis is proposing you have a right of reply now and have the mayor address the council for up to five minutes. No, I, I, I just reiterate, I, I do believe, uh, just to enlarge on that last point, I mean, this is exactly what the scrutiny committee is set up to do, to do in-depth pieces of, you know, task and finish uh, group, would look, would, could, could get under the skin of that. Sorry, Madam Mayor. I apologise, Madam Mayor, I apologise. That's exactly what scrutiny is for, to really look at the issues, you know, in detail, to call witnesses, to ask questions, you know, I, I just do not believe that there aren't sufficient mechanisms there to hold the executive to account. Um, and I would just, you know, ask um, um, Councillor Gilchrist and Councillor Mitchell, just use the tools that we already have available to us effectively. And I think it deals with all the concerns that you've raised. But don't put another um, meeting in the diary which will involve, which, which will involve more expense bringing people in here. When, when, when there are things there that can be, that there are opportunities and there are mechanisms there that can deal with your concerns. So I would reiterate, I believe that we have got it right. Um, not saying that it can never be improved, but I don't believe that what you're suggesting can be satisfied by yet another uh, council meeting. Um, I, I think we should approve the calendar as printed. Thank you, Andrew. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Councillor Davis. Right, we're now going to vote. We're now going to vote on the amendment as moved. Thank you. We're now going to vote on the amendment as moved by Councillor Gilchrist and seconded by Dave, Councillor Mitchell. So, all those in favour of the amendment, please show.
Thank you. All those against? is lost, 31 votes against, 20 in favour, with one abstention. Thank you. So we're now going to vote on the uh, substantive motion as moved by Councillor Bill Davis and seconded by Councillor George Davis. All those in favour, please show. Thank you. 
Councillor Shields. Second, Madam Mayor. Thank you. All those in favour of the recommendation, respect of 90, please show. And that's clearly carried on extension. Thank you. Just moving on to item 9H, and the monitoring officer is leaving the room for this agenda item. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. McCourt sat down, drawing any place and vote on this item. I now invite the Chair of the Employment and Appointments Committee, Councillor Phil Davis, to move and second the Committee's <coughs> recommendation for revision of the current post of Assistant Director, Law and Governance, and to confirm appointment of Philip McCourt as Director, Governance and Assurance and Statutory Monitoring Officer, as contained in the agenda front sheets and pages 1 to 2 of the supplementary papers. <coughs> Councillor Davis. Is there a seconder? Thank you, Councillor George Davis. All those in favour of the recommendation in respect of agenda item 9H, please clearly indicate. And votes against? Councillor Kenny, you now have up to five minutes. Uh, sorry, you don't. You don't. 
sorry, the Budget Amendment. So notice has been given of an amendment to this motion set out on page three of the supplementary papers. So may I ask Councillor Chris Perugia and Dave Mitchell to move and second their amendment. I move, Madam Mayor. Seconded, Madam Mayor. <laughs> Councillor Kenny, you now have up to five minutes to speak to the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And I'd like to face all to record my sincere thanks to both the Chief Fire Officer and the Chair of the Major Tide Fire and Rescue Authority for giving up their time uh, to come along to join us tonight uh, and to thank the um, Chief Fire Officer for making my speech for me. Um, <laughs> I'd also confirm, Madam Mayor, at this stage that the Labour Group are happy to accept the amendment from the Lib Dem Group. We see it as a friendly amendment, so we're happy to accept it as part of our, of our, part of our motion. But major accidents have the potential to cause serious damage to both people and the environment, so it's essential that the risks are carefully controlled under the control of major accident hazards regulations. I wish to pay tribute, by the way, to the leadership of the Merseyside and Fire Rescue Authority, of whom I'm proud to be a representative from the will. Chief Fire Officer Dan Stevens, Deputy Chief Fire Officer <coughs> Phil Garrigan, and the Authority Chair, Councillor Dave Annati, and all their team have the arduous task of overseeing the highest cuts in the country imposed by this pernicious and short-sighted Conservative government. Since 2010, we've seen cuts to the region of £29 million, which will rise to £37 million by 2020. And the direct consequences of those cuts will have on our local fire services include drastically fewer fire appliances, firefighters, fire stations, support service staff and less opportunities to carry out community safety and prevention initiatives which are vital in the whole community. Now I've highlighted the actual figures, Madam Mayor, in the motion tonight and if you look at them I think everybody will agree they're quite staggering. We've got a 48% reduction in appliances a 15% reduction in stations, a 37% reduction in firefighters, and a 34% reduction in support and control staff. These drastic reductions, Madam Mayor, will inevitably have an adverse impact on the ability to respond to any incidents with the appropriate speed and the appropriate weight of attack that's always needed. Now, following the tragic events at Glenfell Towers in London, and the terrorist attacks in London and Manchester, as well as the increase in terror threat levels, as well as seeing an increase in fire incidents and deaths throughout the country. But what we find is the Tory government are totally ignoring the facts of the increase in demand on the fire and rescue service. As the Chief Fire Officer mentioned earlier, we only have to see for ourselves the catastrophic fire at the Echo Arena car park on New Year's Eve. This incident stretched the resources of Merseyside Fire and Rescue to such an extent that we had to go outside to get assistance from neighbouring authorities. Yet at the same time, Madam Mayor, this government praises our firefighters when it's convenient or politically opportune for them to do so. And at the same time, especially in major areas such as Merseyside, they place impossible pressures on the role of the staff. Why? Because they know our firefighters, like other public service professionals, will, at the end of the day, will do whatever they can to protect the public. But for too long, Madam Mayor, this government has taken the fire and rescue service for granted. And this is an abuse. And this abuse is literally putting our communities at risk. Lives are in danger due to the head in the sand attitude of the Tory government. And I'd like to take this opportunity, Madam Mayor, to take this opportunity to place on record my sincere thanks to the dedication, professionalism, commitment of all staff. And I'd like to record my thanks to the two main trade unions involved, FOA and the FBU, for their recognition and understanding of the situation we're in. Madam Mayor, the government should cease any further cuts to the MFRS budget. What fund a real increase in firefighters' pay 
and undertake a full evaluation of the impact of all these cuts to date. And I would suggest, Madam Mayor, no matter which party we represent in this council chamber, we've all got a responsibility to the people that have elected us to make them feel safe. Resources are allocated at national, regional and international level. The fire and rescue don't just deal with fires, as they did in Rock Ferry last Saturday. They deal with terrorist deaths, severe weather, flooding, any incident which has an impact on critical infrastructure and people's lives. It's on that basis, Madam Mayor, I urge everybody to give full support to this motion. Thank you. which has been accepted uh, to, to be joined with the motion from Labour. So uh, I'm, just, I'm going to open it to debate now. I'll give Councillor Chris Ruby the opportunity to speak first. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you for exactly the, uh, the amendment. Uh, the amendment we put forward, or I put forward, is, is about the coma sites that we have in and around our area. Coma, for those of you who might not know what it is, is a control of major accident hazards. Um, we have these are like Eastern Refinery on the North Road, <coughs> SR Oil, the Traveling Oil Terminals, New Star Limited, there's two sites in Eastern and Backfield Road, and one in Powerhouse Road, we've got Unilever in Wood Street, called Sunlight. There you go. <laughs> I can feel like <laughs> Love it. Um, they're not very small in close proximity to us of these coma sites. Uh, some are like Eli Lilly and the company you speak. In Liverpool, there's eight or nine lower tier sites in Liverpool, Chester, such as BNFL. Now, these are all major incident sites, and it's reasonable to assume, should an event occur in any one of these locations, depending on the severity of the incident, appliances will be sent for the world to deal with the situation, leaving reduced capacity for their other duties, uh, as the officers mentioned. What strikes me is after the Granville Tower fire that Theresa May promised to leave no stone on turn to get justice for the victims. Yet the Westminster funding settlements announced last month means another 15% cut to 2020. There's no new investment in firefighters who to inspect buildings, respond to calls, install safety measures, and rescue people in hours of need. And as safety regulations have been tightened, fewer people smoke, and because firefighters do actively prevent prevention work, fitted smoke alarms in helping vulnerable people, it's been stated that fire incidents have actually gone down. But over the last five years, from my research, the number of incidents of fire deaths has remained exactly the same level. Firefighters are still rescuing more than 100 people a day from fire, a range of incidents, not just fire, uh, as my colleague says behind me. They respond to medical emergencies, water rescues, hazardous material incidents, vehicle accidents, jewels of life within an hour, we've got more chance of survival than getting out of the car and into the hospital. Um, people trapped in buildings and, and a plethora of other, other issues. Um, so whatever the emergency is, the fire service is always prepared to respond and they need it now as much as ever before with our risks from new materials, climate change that is contributing to the causing of so much flooding and the increase of our aging population. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councillor Kruger. Anybody else? Can you hold this debate? Yes, Councillor Lee. Thank you, thank you, Miranda. Um, <coughs> good afternoon, members. Excuse me, as um, all members here will know, I am the only Conservative on the Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service. There is one of myself, there is one Liberal Democrat, and uh, the rest is made up of Labour members. Um, some may say that's uncomfortable for me. Um, I don't find it uncomfortable because on the Fire Authority we tend to work together for the benefit of the communities of Merseyside. Madam Mayor, it's therefore, um, I, I do certainly hope that tonight there's very much within this notice of motion, particularly the wording of it, perhaps not in so much as the way that um, it was ranted at us, but nevertheless, within the wording of it, Madam Mayor, I think there's a lot in, in this notice of motion that we all in this authority should be agreeing with and with the amendment as well. Madam Mayor, coming from a blue light organisation myself before I um, came on this council, um, there is one group of people who all emergency services wait to arrive at the scene, particularly at the scene of a road traffic accident, and particularly if that is a serious one, that's always been the fire service, because no other blue light district 
can go near a casualty until the fire service has turned up and make that area safe and made it practical so that that person can be extricated from um, a crush vehicle. So I've always had great respect for the fire service, Madam Mayor. And I have always said that on this side of the chamber, along with other colleagues, when we think that a government of whatever colour have things wrong, or whether we think they are going too far, then we will stand up and say so. And I will stand up and say so. I have done in the past, I've done so in the present, quite recently with the present Home Secretary, and I will continue to do so. Madam Mayor, there are points in Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service which clearly we have you know, tortured ourselves over at, um, at the Fire Authority. We have had to make a financial saving. And Madam Mayor, that is extremely uncomfortable. The cuts are unprecedented. The cuts are unprecedented. Merseyside Fire and Rescue has, for all the time of 11 years since I've been on the Fire Authority, been rated as an excellent, outstanding authority. Madam Mayor, we are really the victims probably, of our own success because when governments have changed and new governments arrive, they always start off by asking fire services to make sure that they are working in collaboration, that they are sharing procurement exercises, and that they are doing all that they can to reduce inefficiency. And Madam Mayor, we've already done all that in Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service before we were even asked to do that. So therefore, the number of issues which we could actually reduce were limited to us. And we now find ourselves in a position where clearly we have to inflict further savings. That is not sustainable, Madam Mayor, because after all, firefighters are those people from emergency services when everybody else is running away from an incident, they are actually running in. And the government has to appreciate that. Madam Mayor, uh, there's quite a lot of what I wanted to say, but clearly I'm going to get a light in a moment. But we have led the way in Merseyside in collaboration. You only have to look at our joint um, um, communication centre, which we have with the police. We have put that forward and we are proud of it. We are proud of our chief officers, as, as Brian Penny has said, and they are probably the leanest band of senior officers of any single um, fire authority in the country. We cannot reduce our senior management any further, Madam Mayor. So, Madam Mayor, I, I do support the notice of motion here tonight. Um, I don't find it difficult to do so because, because I believe that, in fact, the fire service should be funded adequately. Quite, and I'll only take another um, minute with Madam Mayor. We are very soon going to be inspected by a new regime for the um, Majesty's Inspector of Staff Degrees and Fire and Rescue Services. That does pose some worries for me, because I believe that the only thing that the fire service actually can be prepared and actually use the same as the police is the 999 system. After that, it has to be treated as professional firefighters who do a job which is quite definitively different from what the police do. And I do hope that we will be able to say that when the inspectors arrive. So, Madam Mayor, yeah, in conclusion, I think Mercy's fire, fire and Rescue have done all they can to um, cut services. We cannot cut them any further. And as a Conservative, will continue to make that point to any government minister that will listen to me, Madam Mayor. Thank you.